Well, the frequency doesn't affect the velocity. So they both hear at the same time. It doesn't matter whether you listen to it on uh, WBAL 1090 or whether you listen to it on WCBM 600. So the difference in their frequencies does not affect the difference in the velocity. Sound or that radio wave still travels at three times ten. Yeah. This is a fun problem. Not at all. Fun. Dude. Let's see who, how many people got it. That's us. Nice. Okay, what force is necessary to lift M at a constant speed? Well, if there is a constant speed, there is no net torque. Okay? Because if there was a net torque, there would then be an acceleration. So my torque in the counterclockwise direction and my torque in the clockwise directions are the same. Well, the torque clockwise is Fa times the distance R. The torque in the counterclockwise direction is Mg minus its distance R. Mm -hmm. So Fa is equal to MgR over R. Okay, where little r is that one and big R is that one. Okay, if FA disappears, uh, what is the angular acceleration of the system? Okay, well then, now I do have a net torque. And my net torque is going to be this as it falls. Well, that force is mg minus ma, because it's falling. So it's its weight minus whatever is lost because of its motion. The torque is the force times the lever arm. So I have mg minus ma times the lever arm is equal to my moment of inertia times my acceleration. I distribute my r across the subtraction. So mg little r plus m alpha r. I changed a to alpha r. And then when I multiply alpha r times r, I get alpha r squared. So I can introduce that alpha into the system. So, so I can cancel it out. This is equal to I alpha. Okay? So then I subtract this from both sides. MGR is equal to I alpha plus MR squared alpha. And then MGR is equal to alpha times I plus MR squared. And then I just solve for alpha. MGR divided by this. I guess I should be lifting this up to make it easier to see. Uh, if FA is replaced by a new force, FA plus F, well, FA was just enough for constant velocity. Now I have FA plus F, which means I'm going to have an acceleration. So my uh, net torque is going to be the new force times its lever arm minus the old force times its lever arm. Well, the old force is now accelerating upwards. So it's going to be mg plus ma times its lever arm is equal to i alpha. And then I distribute r across my addition here and here. You get this. And then you get this, and then you just isolate out for alpha again. So on this, you see a question like this on the AP exam? That right there is probably worth the majority of credit. Okay? That answer was worth five points. There's four of the five right there. And then the rest of it is the other point. Not that you don't want to get that point. But the concept is the important part. Oh, about that, like, say you have just those two lines, and then your next line is your answer, would you still get five points over here? Uh, you have to show your work. Okay. Actually, if it's only worth one point, then I guess the answer would be worth the point. But so maybe that might be an exaggeration. You might have three points and then two points. One, one of those two points would be your work. You know,
we start doing the AP questions, I'll give you some of the examiner's reports so you can actually see again. I'll tell a few of them, you know, that I want to share those points out. Uh, frictional force, okay. Well, I'm your net torque now is going to be your FA plus F minus the frictional force. Okay, times R is equal to mg plus ma times R. So again, it just gets a little bit more involved because now you have a personal force in here. But it's the same basic problem. All three of those, B, C, and D, are essentially the same problem. They're just adding some forces and taking some forces away. Excellent. So you still have net torque is equal to moment inertia times acceleration. It's just finding out what your net torque is and identifying that. He just told you. All them shot. Zero. Heather Ball. I don't know if I can do it. Don't know what here. Oh, don't know. I did. All right. Maximum so gravitational potential energy is mg delta h. Yeah. You don't know what delta h is? It's given in the problem. Okay, we're lifting up 2.1 meters. Like Ball velocity like like immediately after being hit will be is equal to k. Okay. Hmm. Velocity 6.1. Uh, what's the uh, kinetic energy after being hit? Well, kinetic energy is equal to your potential energy. Like, hmm. uh, what is the ball's momentum immediately after being hit? A lot. Definite momentum, mass times velocity. Three kilogram meters per second. I'm right. <laughs> that is the child's hands in contact with the ball for that. What was the force? Your impulse is equal to your change in momentum. Darn it. And how high will the ball rise if the applies 10 more newtons? Okay? Well, then my velocity is 7.54 meters per second as opposed to 5.4 as opposed to 6.4 meters per second. So it's going to go higher. Okay, easy. It's going to go to 2.9 meters rather than 2.1. So from energy to momentum, back to energy. I'll save the last one for another day.